Hi, today we've got a repair video and we're looking at this East Tester ET3240. This is a relatively low cost 4.5 digit multimeter, which I think I did a review on about a year ago or so. And it has been working really quite nicely. I do actually quite like these, despite the slightly chintzy nature, it's actually been working quite nicely on my bench and actually this is the one that's been the most used. However, it has developed a fault. I don't know if you can see on the display, it is flickering a little bit and I have noticed occasionally it does reboot as well which suggests that we've got a problem somewhere in the power supply section. Now one thing to bear in mind when approaching this repair is that first of all we might want to just do a visual inspection just see if we can see anything obvious with any of the solder joints. I suspect it will not be a faulty component based on the way that it's failing uh, another thing to note is that you probably won't be able to pick up this type of fault with a standard multimeter. You can see the flickering, in fact it's rebooted now, but the flickering is relatively high frequency and a standard multimeter will actually average over quite a long period, so you might not see these little transients. With a scope you might be able to, with a LED um, just probing different points you'll be able to see the flickering occurring on the LED, but with a multimeter we might not be able to. So let's get the cover off. It does seem to do it no matter what orientation it's in. Uh, this has been sitting on my bench horizontally and it's still doing it now even though I'm holding it up for the camera. So it does seem to be fairly repeatable. Let's get the cover off. So this is what the unit looks like inside. You may have seen this before in my previous video. And we need to work out where to narrow our search. We don't really want to be testing every component on the PCB. So first of all, we need to work out if it's affecting just one power supply rail or the entire PCB because there's multiple failure points earlier on than the PCB. We've got the AC connector, we've got a power switch, we've got some connectors actually connecting to the power switch. Uh, it's unlikely to be the transformer on its own, uh, but it could also be something on the connectors to the PCB. So if we're seeing the problem with every supply rail, that suggests it's something either the transformer, the switch or the AC input. If some of the supplies look clean and we're seeing some noise on others, then we need to narrow our search down further. Now one thing that I've seen already is that we have multiple supply rails and this supply here is completely isolated from everything on the acquisition board. We've got the display board and the user interface board that is fed with this ribbon cable to this little isolated section here. So this has its own power supply that immediately is looking suspect to me just based on the fact that uh, that is the only thing that's providing power to this front PCB and it does seem to be a power problem. We've got a ARM micro here which is obviously running the software so it is very likely that we're seeing a problem in this area here but we need to work out whether um, you know it's something upstream of that first. So what we're going to do is probably with the oscilloscope we're going to have a look at the output from these windings and see if we can see anything abnormal in the waveforms. Right so first of all I have hooked this up to an isolation transformer to improve the safety to some extent. You do have to understand the limitations of an isolation transformer before you start poking around in the main section but I'm hoping that we don't need to do that because we can diagnose essentially from looking at the output from the windings of this transformer but uh, we are connected up for a bit of safety. It is flickering away quite happily on the front panel here so what we're going to start off with is looking at the two um, wires that come from the transformer that go to that power supply at the front. So let's see if we can see anything unusual here. And that is what the output looks like and that looks pretty clean to me. Also one thing to be aware of with those isolation transformers is they are not a low impedance source so it is very easy to distort the AC waveform and be fooled by the fact that you haven't quite got a proper sine wave. That is dictated by your load but everything looks fine here so I'm not seeing any problem with the output of this transformer. Let's have a look at some of the other windings just out of interest. I'm assuming they are grouped um, but yeah it's the same story there everything looks clean. Let's have a look at this one over here. There we go, we're over range, but again you can see that's a nice clean sine wave. So I'm quite confident in suggesting that it's not anything to do with the transformer, the power switch or the AC supply coming in. So this is the power supply section of the PCB and I'm pretty sure that the problem is localised to this power supply or somewhere onto the main 
uh, display PCB. It just doesn't make sense for this to be associated with any of that. Also, another thing is that the readings are always accurate. So even when it's flickering away, it's reading fine. If we were seeing problems with any of these power supplies, I'm pretty sure that we would see erroneous readings. So I'm fairly happy that we need to be looking at this section onwards. And you can see we've got some opto isolators, a isolating IC, one of these magnetic devices. So it makes sense that this is an isolated supply just for the user interface. And then we've got this isolated interface for the um, serial interface to this chip here that then controls all the functionality of the multimeter itself. So let's have a look at this. Now, one thing here that I've seen, we do have an LED and that is quite constant. I've not seen that flicker at all which suggests that the problem potentially isn't even on this PCB. But there's a few things that we need to look at. First of all, we've got a component here that's been reworked. Let's see if we can zoom in. So here's our little DC to DC converter and some things to point out. So we've got a component that's been reworked just here, this resistor. Um, I can't see what that's doing at the moment. Um, but then we've got a inductor, which also looks like it's either been hand soldered or reworked and replaced with something else. We've got a little solder ball just down there, but it's not doing any harm at the moment, although we do need to remove it. So I don't think it's that. Uh, but yeah, this LED is pretty steady. So I don't think the problem is there. And the display is flickering away. We've then got this ribbon cable that goes off to the front panel. And I think this is worth some investigation. So moving along the chain, we do have a ribbon cable here that goes off to the front panel. And connectors are always a potential source of problems because first of all you've got the solder joints from the PCB to the header, then you've got the connection from the header to the actual connector housing and the crimp pins inside it. Obviously we've got wires as well, so it's always worth giving these a little wiggle test. So we'll do that next. So here's our ribbon connector. If we give it a wiggle, do we see anything? Uh, we do actually see it flickering away there. Right, so excuse the handheld camera. Um, this is the connector off to the front panel and you can see there's a lot of solder splatter and that kind of thing all over the PCB but I don't see anything particularly concerning. Obviously they have trimmed the connector pins after soldering which is not necessarily a good thing especially with these quite thick pins it can cause some fractures internally but I can't see anything that looks concerning but I think I'm going to clean all that up and remake those connections. So that's about as good as I could clean them up with the access that I've got to this connector. Uh, there's still a little bit of splatter on the PCB at the back there, but it's certainly a lot better than it was. And I've remade all of those joints with some Kester solder, which I've not really used before, but it seemed to flow quite nicely. So this meter really doesn't look like it's been designed for any kind of repair. I did want to try and gain access to the front panel PCB just to check the solder connections at that end. But when you take out all of the screws for the front panel PCB, you can't actually pull the PCB away because the LCD is fixed in place. And it does look like they actually soldered the flexi onto the PCB once it was assembled. So now the only way that you'd be able to gain access to this front panel PCB is to desolder this because there's actually some screws behind the PCB holding the LCD in place. And a similar story for the front panel connector. They've got some screws in here, but even if you take those out, you can't actually separate the front panel from this PCB because they soldered these things after the fact as well. So pretty much if you start having trouble with this front panel PCB, you're going to have to start doing some serious destruction to try and fix it. However, it does look like that connector was the problem. It's certainly not flickering anymore and I can't get it to flicker at all. So um, either the solder joints were poor or we just had a, a bit of a poor connection between one of the pins and the crimp contacts. So a bit of a uh, disappointing repair because we don't have a definitive answer. However, it's been running for quite a long time now and I'm seeing no problem with it. So I'm guessing and I'm putting it down to that given the fact that we were able to get it to start flickering until I got a bit more hasty with the movements and then it all stopped altogether. Right so there we are it is working a little bit anticlimactic there I was hoping for a bit of a better repair but it does seem to be working properly now and as you can see the readings are absolutely spot on it's hooked up here to Ian's PDVS2 Mini if you haven't got one of these I highly recommend you go and get one I'll put a link in the description down below he also has a YouTube channel if you don't already know so take a look at his channel uh, but one thing that I've noticed about this meter is that the entire time that I've had it 
it's been absolutely spot on with its specs. It always reads exactly whatever I feed into it without any trouble. It's been pretty good. And that's one of the reasons why I've just had this sat on the bench pretty much turned on for the last year non-stop. Because um, obviously I don't quite care as much about this one as I do my Agilent meters that I've got sitting off screen. Um, I tend to turn those off when I don't need them because I don't want the vacuum fluorescent display burning out. Uh, with this I don't care quite so much. And it's been fine until now where it started to do all that flickering nonsense. Um, really the problem that I'm seeing with these lower cost meters is that the assembly is just not there. Um, they haven't respun this PCB to get rid of these stupid resistors that are uh, piggybacked all over the place. There's still some bodge wires and it's not been streamlined for manufacture and therefore it's not been streamlined for repair either because we can't get that PCB out with the LCD attached. It just seems a really crazy design. Um, so if it does go seriously wrong, I think it's probably going to be one of those kind of devices that we probably have to throw out. Um, East Tester do suggest that they are sort of vaguely a reputable um, multimeter and test equipment manufacturer, but I can't see how they'd ever really repair this device without some serious destruction. I'm guessing that they're expecting hardly anyone to actually physically send one of these back for repair, uh, which isn't a great thing. Um, I'm not sure I'd necessarily recommend that people buy these um, for their lab if they want something that's reliable, but it has been working okay for me. So that's about it for this. Um, I'm in two minds as to whether to release this video or not. I probably will do um, just for the sake of allowing people to see the general repair process. Unfortunately, we didn't get very far into it before it stopped uh, misbehaving, but it seems to be okay now. If there's any further problems, then obviously I'll do a, an update video. So hopefully it, you enjoyed the video, found something useful in it. Uh, thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to visit them if you're thinking of getting any PCBs made. And until next time, thanks for watching.